Okay, everybody. I am starting my Lindy Lou and You Kids Corner show. Um, never mind. Okay, so um, I accidentally came in the wrong way, so I just changed it to Jeannie Bender, and I'm going to wait a few minutes for you guys to show up. So we're going to play a little Lindy Lou song so that my la, friends la, la, can join la, 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 So there's Romica. I'm going to call Nancy to see if she can now find me. I had a little technical difficulty. So, calling Nancy. Hello. Hi. Um, I came in through Jeannie Bender. Can you see me now? You Say hi to everybody. I've got your phone on. It's Nancy and Sia. Sophia and Lily. Oh, hello, Nancy and Sophia and Lily. Thank you so much for restarting your computer. I'm going to wait a few minutes for you guys to come online because I have some really interesting things to tell you. All right, go ahead. Oh, okay. And I am going to see. <laughs> I reset my video. Oh, there's Heidi. Okay. You found me good, Heidi. Hey, Heidi. Do you have Boo and Mr. with you today? So glad you could find me. Hello, we're going to give you all a few minutes to find me. Or, sorry, Nancy's Wisconsin. Sophia and Lily are Minnesota. Heidi and Diane are Washington. And Romica and I are in California. So, it is so nice to have you. And I think we are ready to start our Lindy Lou and You Kids Corner program. And I want you to thank you all for joining our Lindy Lou Books Group. This is the month of October and my favorite month of the year. And I can't wait to ask you two important questions. What do you think are the two things that happen in October? So Boo, oh, Boo is here with Heidi. I'm so glad Boo could join us. Oh, and and uh, Diane has invited Darcy to come. So hopefully Darcy will join us. And so guys, I want you to comment and tell me what two important things happen in October. So please leave your messages on the screen and we'll take a look and see what you think they are. And later in the show, I'm going to share a really fun October activity for you to do at home. But before I continue, I'd like to show you my kids' corner. It is so colorful today. I have gourds, I have topaz, jasper, ruby, diamond, lindy, Lou. I have beautiful flowers. And even the flowers have gourds in them. These little pumpkins are gourds. And so I have my pillows, and I have a couple of things on the side here I'm going to share with you in just a minute. So this is my kids' corner. And I have some really cute, colorful, funny things in my kid's corner today. And these are called gourds. <laughs> they, are, they come in all different shapes and sizes. 
Did you know you can dry a hard shell gourd and make it into all kinds of things? And some gourds have hard shells and some gourds have soft shells. So they are different, but they are all gourds, which is a fruit. And when you make them into different things, you can take a gourd and you can turn it into spoons. You can turn them into bowls because when the shells dry, they become really, really hard and beautiful. You can also take a gourd and turn it into a lantern. This gourd has holes drilled out of it in different dimensions. And as you can see, when it's lit up with a, a light from underneath, the patterns from the gourd actually shine on the walls. So you can make some really, really beautiful decorations with gourds. And Darcy is here. Hi, Darcy. Thank you so much for joining. Nancy says the two things that they like best about Halloween is about October is Halloween and our birthdays. That's a good answer, Nancy. I'd also like to show you what else you can make with a gourd. Look at this. You can make a birdhouse. Can you imagine that beautiful little bluebird sitting inside the gourd? That's a pretty big house for a bird, don't you think? I'm sure it's very happy being inside. Another thing I want to show you is some funny looking gourds. When I saw this picture, take a look. These are the most colorful gourds I've ever seen. And they look like a gourd on top of gourd. Look at them. I think they look like they have crowns on their heads. So I am calling these the gourds with the crown heads. And behind these colorful, beautiful gourds, you see another gourd. It is called a pumpkin. Yes, a pumpkin is a gourd. Oh, Heidi, I love your message saying Halloween and Halloween, her two favorite things about October. And I couldn't agree with you more. I love Halloween and the food that we get to eat. I'm going to show you another really cool picture of what you can do with a gourd. These are called maracas. And these were made out of gourds. And when they, when they made these, they left the seeds inside. And so because the seeds are inside, they make a funny noise. And guess what? I have maracas. These are from Mexico. Maracas are really, really popular in Mexico. And these, you can hear the seeds inside. Actually, I think these were filled with dried beans. So they cut holes in the bottom and before they put the handles on, they made them, they filled them with dried beans. These are the cutest little maracas. And I would like to show you where mar these maracas came from. The maracas are very, very popular in Mexico. And if you look down at the bottom of our map, you will see a purple state in the country of Mexico. This state is called Oaxaca. And I made it pink today. O-X is how it's spelled. It starts with the letters O-X. And Oaxaca is where these maracas, maracas came from but you can buy them all over the state of Mexico, in the United States and everywhere. So I am so glad I had maracas to show you today. Later in the show, I am going to show you how to make something really cool. I'm going to show you how to make a birdhouse out of a gourd. Look at this colorful picture. Can you see the hummingbird and the other bird with its feathers flared? This is a beautifully colored gourd that was turned into a birdhouse, which I will share with you later in the show. So I hope you have a kid's corner in your home and it isn't hard to create. 
bring in your pillows, your stuffies, your books, your toys, and make it your place. It's okay to invite your family to come and join you in your kid's corner, but remember, if you make a kid's corner in your house, it's your kid's corner, your place to relax, to enjoy, and to read. And I would like to show you on our map another state that I'm highlighting this week. So as we go on each program, we, we add another state. And this week, I've added the state of Minnesota because some of our Kids Corner members are from Minnesota. Their names are Sophia and their names are Lily. And we have another Kids Corner member named Simon and Ben and Sabrina and Carolyn and all Nancy's from Wisconsin, but she is with her Minnesota friends today. And so we have all, and somebody named Chris, we have all kinds of members of our Kids Corner group from the state of Minnesota. So I wanted to point that out to you today. So Minnesota is also, oh, I have to keep this picture up, also very, very famous because it is alongside one of the five Great Lakes. These are the Great Lakes in the United States. They're the largest lakes in the United States. And Minnesota is right next to the largest of all the lakes, Lake Superior. And so one of the things that they're known for in Minnesota is they say you can drive one minute in any direction in the state of Minnesota and you can find water. So there are a lot of lakes in the state of Minnesota. And they have something really, really cool. It's a bird and it's an unusual bird. It's a very beautiful bird. This bird is called a loon. And I wanna tell you something really interesting about this bird. According to National Geographic, loons walk very clumsily on the earth, on land. And it is because their feet and legs are located very far to the rear of their bodies. So they have a very hard time walking, which makes them powerful swimmers because their heads are in the front and their feet are in the back. And that's how they catch their fish, by swimming in the water. So loons live on the water most of their lives because they have a hard time walking. And sometimes you can see a picture of a loon and on its back will be its babies because the babies can't walk very well on land either. And I found this very interesting silhouette of a loon so you can see how far back their feet are placed on their bodies and how long their necks are, which makes them really great swimmers. Oh, Romica says Halloween and pumpkins are her two favorite things. Yes, I love pumpkins. I love pumpkin pies. I love all kinds of things about pumpkins. And now we're going to talk a little bit more about gourds. Aren't these amazing? All the different shapes. I have some fun facts about gourds. And they actually grow very, very well in the state of Minnesota. And I wonder, Nancy and Lily and Sophia, if you have ever been to a gourd farm, because I'm gonna show you a picture of it. Gourds are planted in the spring and they grow on vines and are harvested in the fall. And this is the most amazing picture I found of a greenhouse. Actually, it's an outdoor greenhouse where the gourds have been planted. And as you can see, their leaves and vines are above them. And the gourds are so heavy that when they grow, they hang down into the greenhouse. I just think this is such a fabulous picture. So these gourds that we have today at one time were hanging 
from a vine somewhere. Maybe this one's even from the state of Minnesota. Who knows? Gourds are often used in autumn centerpieces and on dinner tables, and they're harvested in the fall, as I said. I just love them. I just think they're so colorful. And the gourd also has a cousin, and the cousin to the gourd is a pumpkin. Have any of you ever seen a white pumpkin? Well, I'm going to show you one because I saw one long time ago and I couldn't believe it because there really are white pumpkins. Pumpkins come. Oh, Nancy went to a gourd farm yesterday and bought some for Sophia and Lily. Maybe you'd like to post them on our Kids Corner page after the show. Look at this beautiful white pumpkin. So yes, it is possible to see a white pumpkin. There is a pumpkin festival in the state of Iowa called the Ryan Norland Pumpkin Way Off Pumpkin Fest. And I want to show you this picture because look at the size of these white pumpkins. They are absolutely amazing. And when I went to this pumpkin festival, these pumpkins, especially that large white one, which won the contest that year, actually inspired me to write about them in our Lindy Lou Adventure Series book, Harvest Time. Here we go. Oops, whoops, whoops. <laughs> Harvest time. Here's harvest time. And look at the cover. There's a white pumpkin on the cover. And if you go into the book, I'm going to show you a picture of... Here's the white pumpkin that inspired me to include this in the Lindy Lou book, Harvest Time. Here comes the biggest one of them all. Here's a big pumpkin. Said Ryan, he stood up to get a better look. What we have here is this year's winner of the world's largest pumpkin award, said the people, said the parade marshal over a loudspeaker. It's Dick and Catherine Treaker's pumpkin. They brought it all the way from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. That's where I'm from, Nancy too. Their pumpkin weighed in at a record 2,126 pounds. The Treakers were on a trailer with their award-winning pumpkin. Mrs. Treaker waved to the crowd. Everyone clapped and cheered. The winning pumpkin is white, said Kurt and Angie's daughter, Libby. Can a real pumpkin be white? Pumpkins can be many colors, said Sherry. Joe carved a green and yellow one, yellow, green and yellow striped one yesterday. So because of the Ryan Norland Pumpkin Fest, I decided that I was going to write about the white pumpkins and I had such a, a fun time at the pumpkin fest. Nancy was with me that here's a picture of me with some of those giant pumpkins. Can you imagine how large they are? I wonder if any of you have seen pumpkins this large. If not, I will post a picture on our Lindy Lou Kids Corner group so you can take a look at that later in the show. Another cousin to the gourd, you won't believe this, they're melons. Cantaloupe and watermelons are considered cousins to the gourd. So is the pumpkin. And there's, there's also a fruit that I found very fascinating because it's also a cousin to the gourd. And it is a zucchini. 
Have you ever thought of a zucchini as a gourd? Well, it's a fruit and it has a skin and there are seeds and it is actually a cousin to the gourd. So I found out some very interesting things about gourds this week. Gourds make great decorations, but they are also very tasty. So try to cook them before they get too old. And the seeds in a gourd are edible too. I'm sure you guys have tasted pumpkin seeds. Here are some pumpkin seeds. And as you can see, when they're raw, they're green, just like soybeans in this Harvest Time book as well. And when they're roasted, they're brown, just like soybeans in the Harvest Time book. So pumpkin seeds can be eaten raw or they can be eaten, eaten toasted. And yes, I saw a picture of Heidi Diane on Facebook this morning, they went to a pumpkin festival and saw gourds and pumpkins and all kinds of things. And Kelly loves pumpkins and gourds too. So I am having so much fun sharing this story about gourds with you. And I would like to tell you that now is the time in our program where I'm going to show you how to make a birdhouse out of a gourd. First, you have to pick the gourds and you have to hang them up to dry. And so after you pick them in those beautiful greenhouse, this farmer is hanging them up to dry because he's making gourd birdhouses to put around his farm. Now they don't look quite as pretty when they're drying as they do when they're fresh. They kind of dry out and get a little moldy, but you have to dry them. And they actually take six months to one year to completely dry out. Then after the gourd is dry, you take it down and you have to scrub it. So this gourd was scrubbed with a copper scrubber. You can also use steel wool to scrub your gourd on and make sure you use some warm water to clean all of that mold and all of that those dry parts off of your gourd. After you scrub them you have to uh, shake the gourd because the seeds are captured inside the meat of the gourd that is all dried out and I have a very interesting photo for you. This shows gourds and it also shows the inside. So as you can see, gourds have, have seeds all the way up and down the meat of the gourd. So when they dry out, you have to shake them so that the seeds shake down to the bottom of the gourd. And then the next step is once it's cleaned and scraped and dried out, you have to drill a hole in it. Now, the holes are very interesting and the size of the hole, see his drill over here? He's drilled a, two, a one and a half inch hole in this gourd. And the size of the hole is very important because it determines what kind of bird you're going to attract. So this man likes bluebirds and they like holes the size of a one and a half inch Diameter. Diameter means it's one and a half inch round. And so a larger bird can't fit into this hole. So you can get a chart and find out what diameter hole to drill in your gourd depending upon what kind of bird you'd like to att attract. Then once you have the hole in your gourd, you can shake the seeds out and some of the pulp will come out too. This gourd, would, after you shake it, look at all the seeds that came out of this gourd. There were actually a couple hundred seeds in this gourd. And the farmer said that what he did is he planted these gourd seeds in the forest around his farm, hoping that some of them would grow and that he could harvest some more gourds right out of his very own farm forest by his farm. 
So don't forget that seeds can be planted and that's the, that's the ideal thing to do with the seeds of a gourd. You can plant them. I'm pretty sure you can roast them and eat them too. And then the next step is you have to drill a hole for the, in the stem of the gourd so you can hang a string for the gourd so you can hang up your gourd. And this is something people might not know that I think is an important fact. You also have to drill four to six holes in the bottom so that when it rains and water gets in and a bird is in there sitting on its nest, the water can drain out so it doesn't get moldy underneath the bird's nest. So it's important that you drill holes in the bottom of the gourd. And the next thing this farmer did is, he didn't have to do this, but he decided to sand around the hole to make the hole smooth so that the bird would have a soft entrance. And I thought that was very thoughtful because it's not necessary, but it is something he does with a little piece of sandpaper. Yes, and you can cook those seeds spicy and salty and sweet, just like Heidi said. I would like to hear how many of you guys have had pumpkin seeds this October already. So I would just like to show you that a gourd can become a very, very pretty birdhouse. This one has also been varnished. And because the varnish is a protective coat that is placed on the front of the gourd, it makes them last longer. So if you are interested in making a gourd birdhouse, there are lots of instructions on the internet or you can replay this video. And as you can see, this dried old moldy gourd can be turned into a beautiful birdhouse. And so this is an exciting thing. Birdhouses, don't you? And isn't it amazing that you can make it out of something from nature? Well, birdhouses are hung near gardens because birds like to eat insects. And this farmer told me that he hangs them near his garden to help keep the garden insect free. So I think that's really clever too. Oh, Nancy thinks they're beautiful. Oh, garlic and cinnamon, uh, sugar and air fried seeds. Oh my gosh, they sound so good, Kelly. And Romica says she loves pumpkin seeds. They always have them in their home. Oh, isn't that great? I'm so glad to hear this. Now, I bet you would like to make a gourd uh, birdhouse in your home, but birdhouses made of gourds take a long time to make because you have to dry the gourd for six months to a year. So I'm going to show you how to make a birdhouse with things that you might have around your home. And this is a birdhouse we're gonna to make together today. And here they are. These birdhouses were made with water bottles. Aren't they adorable? I'm sure a lot of you have water bottles or different kinds of containers around your house. I'm gonna show you how to make this birdhouse. It's really quite simple. So what you do is you take a plastic bottle. I'm trying to hold this up so you can see it. I've already cut it up. You take a plastic bottle and you cut the top off. There's the top. And you cut the middle out. There's the middle. So again, you take a scissors and you cut the top off. And I've decorated this with a Sharpie and Sharpies came, come in many different colors, or you can paint them like the ones I show you. And then you cut the middle out, and then you cut a door inside the plastic. It's very easy to cut a door into this plastic because it's very thin. Then what you do after you decorate your birdhouse is you take some crazy glue, or some Elmer's glue or some kind of glue and you put the roof on and as you can see 
This makes a birdhouse very similar to these. And all you have to do is poke a hole in the top and put in a string and you can hang these birdhouses all over the place outside. Now, this one is so little, I hope that it will attract a hummingbird. But I also want to remind you to make sure you poke holes in the bottom. And another thing you do, because these plastic birdhouses are so lightweight, you add a little bit of rice, about a half a cup of rice to the bottom to give it some weight. Then you poke a hole and you tie a string through it and then you can hang up your very own birdhouse. And if you live in California, I'm sure a bird will come and make a nest very soon. And if you live in Wisconsin, you can actually look for them and hang them and wait for the spring. I, I know you also have birds that are there all, all around. Oh, and oh my gosh, Alicia just came in and I'm saying hi to Alicia. She is a lady from Los Angeles that I have known for almost 40 years and I'm so glad you found us. Hola, como esta Alicia? We call her Licha sometimes. Como esta Licha? Muy bien. So nice to see that you joined us. Uh, and Kelly, I know Kelly and Caleb are going to love to make this birdhouse. So I'm just going to show you this picture very quickly as a summary. You take a water bottle, you cut off the top, you cut a little bit off the center so that the narrow part can form the roof and you can use paints to color your birdhouse anything you like. Don't forget to poke holes in the bottom and a hole in the top for your string and don't forget to put some rice in it so that it can hang heavily on the bottom. Now I want to show you another idea for pictures of birdhouses in case you don't have any plastic bottles. Look at these. These birdhouses were made from milk cartons, orange juice cartons, any kind of cartons you have at home. Isn't that cute? This one's an owl. This one's really pretty. It's pink. I love the way it's been painted. And if you stick sticks in it, maybe even a bird will sit on one of the sticks if you're setting it on a porch. But if you are, make sure you put rice in it or rocks in it so that your birds can sit and it won't tip over. Now I'm going to show you a really, really funny, funny birdhouse. Oh, Nancy and Alicia are connecting for the first time in about 20 years, I bet. I'm so glad to see that. Did you know you can make a birdhouse out of a bleach bottle as well? These are plastics that are in our envi environment and we actually have too many of these. So the more things we can use our plastics for, like I can cut a hole in this and turn it into a scoop. If I'm playing in a garden or in the sand, you can use these plastics for all kinds of things. But today, we may, I'm going to show you a picture of a birdhouse that was made out of this very own bleach bottle. This bleach bottle was turned into this cute little birdhouse. Look at the shells that are glued to the front and they put sticks along the side. I think they actually look like pencils. Oh no, they're just straw. And then they put this beautiful straw on top called raffia, which is really, really fun. It comes in many different colors. And they made a beautiful birdhouse out of a bleach bottle. I am so glad that you guys are getting to talk and connect through our Lindy Lou Facebook page. It's one of the reasons that I use Facebook because I love communicating with all of you and I love seeing all your names come up. And this reminds me of a life lesson, all these birdhouses. Boys and girls, parents, teachers, moms and dads, you can't always have something you really want. Maybe it's too expensive, or maybe like a gourd, it takes too long to dry.
because gourds take six months to a year to be ready to make a birdhouse with. So here's my life lesson. Picture a birdhouse, and I'm going to show you one more because I want to give you lots of ideas. Here is another birdhouse. Do you know what this birdhouse was made from? It kind of looks like an ice cream container, which it might be. See the hole? The hole is right here for the bird, and they decorated it very nicely. But this was actually made from a yogurt container. So look at all these great ideas for making birdhouses. I would love you guys to send me pictures of the birdhouses you make. And so my life lesson for today is if you really want something, want to make something like a birdhouse to hang in your yard, or maybe you want to hang it nearby your window so you can watch the birds fly when you're inside your house, Make it out of things you find around the house because when you're finished, you will be, they, your birdhouse will be much more special because you made it yourself. So that is my life lesson for today. Oh, Caleb needed a life lesson today. Well, I hope I've inspired him to build a birdhouse and send me a picture. I hope you all build bird houses and, and send pictures, and I hope you read Harvest Time this month because it's written about the month of October, and there's all kinds of games and fun things that Lindy Lou does with one of her siblings in this book. So please make sure you pick up Harvest, Harvest Time and learn a little bit more about how much fun Lindy Lou has in October. So... Our program for this week has come to an end, and I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for joining me in my colorful kids' corner, and Lindy Lou and I want to tell you that we very much enjoyed seeing you all today, and we will see you next week in our Lindy Lou and You Kids' Corner because I have something very interesting to share with you about October next week. So for now, I want to say thank you for joining our Kids Corner. Please make a Kids Corner in your house, your place to relax, to enjoy, to read. And remember, it's all about Lindy Lou and you. Thank you for joining, and bye-bye.